Hello. So this is the plankton spice. So plankton calls the spice a modular saturation unit. Um, it's a semi-modular, but you can take it out of the case and install it in your Eurorack. So the core of the spice is the analog modulation unit, which uses two core new tubes and a bunch of other um, distortion circuits. There's also a digital section for bit crushing and general bit mangling. There's also a filter section, which is a high pass and low pass filter. There's a wet dry mixer, the envelope filler, and also some feedback for each of the section going back to it. And there's a bunch of really cool touches, like the fact that every single CV input has an attenuator. There's a light to show you basically when the signal is clipping inside of each section. Uh, and overall, I really like the sort of feel of the unit. So let's plug it in and hear what it sounds like. Focus. All right, so everything is plugged in. Let's just start the uh, basil over here. And this is the track that we're gonna use here. So let's start by taking a look at the filter section. So I'm gonna take the, uh, so the filter is the first one uh, outside of the input, and we're just gonna isolate the, all right, so I'll put a filter and let's go directly into the mixer here. So, all right, so this is the dry signal. And now let's bring in the wet signal. Okay, so low pass filter. One of the nice things about the spice is the fact that uh, all of the uh, linear slider actually have LEDs in them and they show you the sort of the intensity of the signal, which is I find really useful. So this is the low pass filter over here. And a high pass filter. And then obviously both together gives you a bandpass filter, right? So if we normalize this over here. So the next thing I wanna talk about, so let's get the uh, digital section for now because it's one of the most complex. And let's just jump into the analog section. All right, so let's talk about the analog section first. Um, so in order to do that, let's skip everything else. We're gonna go directly from the filter into the analog in, uh, which is over here. And then we can sort of swap the dry signal for the wet signal. And let's adjust the input until we start seeing the light blink a little bit. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so now this is the dry signal. And this is the uh, wet signal with the drive. So starting by the uh, new tube. Uh, so this is a single new tube. So increase the drive over here. Start getting a little bit of that crunchiness. Uh, so what's really nice about the distortion unit is the fact that we can do things like this. Um, so take the filter. Okay, so now I have basically just a low end that is sent into the analog uh, saturation unit. So we can increase that over here, get it really crunchy. And then we can bring back the dry signal. And built into the analog section, we also have a post-drive uh, filter, so, which can be, uh, it's a, a multi-mode filter. There's low pass, band pass, and high pass. It's in low pass right now. All right, so we can roll off. Again, let's remove the dry signal. So we can really roll this up, and there's resonance as well. dry signal into the mix. So what we can do is take the envelope follower, which is being fed from the dry uh, drum signal right now, and use the output of that to control the wet signal. So effectively, we will only hear the result when 
there's a sound already. A little bit of resonance. There we go. So now we have another sort of very interesting. I think the spice is going to be excellent on drums, just because you can sort of shape things exactly how you want them and use the uh, envelope follower to just really narrow down to what you need to hit in there. So that's the sort of double new tube. Um, sort of bring it down because I know the thumb box is a really dirty signal. Now to make this even crazier is we'll use the um, analog feedback. So this will basically send some signal back into the chain. Let's move on to the digital section. So uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate uh, the digital section. We're still going to use the filter to sort of control what gets sent into the uh, digital section. And then we're going to actually skip the uh, analog uh, saturation unit and send it straight to the mixer. All right, so uh, by default, the digital section works uh, as a bit crusher. Um, you have control over the sample rate, which will go from uh, 12,000, 12 megahertz uh, all the way down to one megahertz. And then we have the bit rate itself, which goes from uh, 12 bits down to one bit. Now, what's really interesting about the bit rate is the fact that instead of just going basically 12 bits, 11 bits, and like that, it actually sort of downsample into sub bits, which is really interesting. So it just cuts off because the signal is actually sort of 12 bits all the time. It just gets sort of downsampled internally. We can do a little magic things like that. So let's just reduce that. Uh, so I know it's sort of numbered. One is one bit, two bit, three bit. 4 bit, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then this is 11, 12, and there we go, right? So let's go down to fairly low, it's gonna be sort of 3 bit, it's gonna be good. All right. And other nice addition, there's a simple filter because the uh, digital section can actually sort of generate a fair amount of sort of high frequency noise, so we can just roll that off nicely without having to deal with it. And the other thing we can do is actually sort of use the low pass filter to control the signal that we send into the digital section. So I'm going to do that and then reduce the sample rate to make it fairly crunchy. Okay, then let's go to drums only. All right, so this was the main uh, digital mode, which is bit crushing. There's actually three more modes uh, to the digital section. So there's the bit crushing that we just saw. Uh, there's also a bit muting, bit inverting, and a bit swapping uh, function. And those are accessible through the uh, main encoder over here. So if I double click on it. All right, so the first blinking thing is the bit muting. So in this case, middle bits. Five and six. All right, some interesting thing happening with bit muting. So whenever there's a dot uh, into the LED display, the bit is muted. When there isn't, it's letting through. So we're just gonna bring everything back. There we go. Okay, let's bring it back. To normal, there we go. Okay, next is, let's double click again. So it's blinking faster, which means we're now uh, bit inverting, right? So whenever there's a one in the signal, it becomes a zero. When it's a zero, it becomes a one, so. All right, I generated a giant mess. Last mode of the digital unit is when you have the segment thing here is uh, bit swapping. So what this does is it actually sort of inverts the position of bits in the signal. 
Um, so for example, uh, and then there's a whole uh, display thing that tells you which each of these uh, signals are. So each of these shapes actually corresponds to pair of bits that are getting inverted. Let's just try something random. Okay, so we're rolling it off. Okay, what else can we do with this? Let's just reduce that even less. So last thing is the fact that because it's modular, we can actually invert the order and completely control uh, the order of each of the sections. All right, so now we have signal comes in over here, goes into the analog section, output of the analog section goes into the uh, double filter, and then the output of the filter goes into the wet dry mix. While we have it, let's take the uh, invert of the uh, envelope follower and let's have it drive the high pass filter. All right, so I think this video has gone on for long enough. Uh, I'm definitely gonna sort of edit this down to size. Uh, this is a sort of interesting exploration. I've done this three nights in a row where I sort of started recording um, this video and I ended up playing with the spice uh, for half an hour. Anyway, uh, I hope you had a good time. Uh, thank you and uh, merci, au revoir.